So with that, I want to end this a little bit early and bring on my, my brand new cultural correspondent. We've been looking around since I started this show. It's very important to me that we give the next generation a chance to come up and, and teach old fogies like me something that, you know, maybe I don't know about the culture. So let's bring him on. We have our new Michael Knowles Show cultural correspondent, Andy. Andy Millennial, thanks for coming on. Yo. Andy, as, as a millennial, what is your take on our culture broadly right now? Well, speaking as a millennial, and I have to speak as a millennial because I've never read a book and I haven't seen a movie that was made before 2007. So mm -hmm. when I say speaking as a millennial, that's actually the only thing I can bring to this conversation of is course. my millennialness, you know, my, my essential millennialness, mm -hmm. my millennialism, you might say. Mm -hmm. and, and as a millennial, I think I can speak for all millennials and, and can tell you the kind of world in which we millennials live. And so that's why I reference that whenever I say anything whatsoever. And I, you know, I think as a millennial, I, I feel that the culture is in serious trouble. Uh, you know, we have uh, these new things, that we, you know, rock and roll music, I think, is making people, uh, you know, um, immoral. We have. <laughs> I, I knew I wasn't going to get that. I was really. I blame you. I, I, I almost, I almost broke. So we have our our new cultural correspondent, uh, Andrew Claven, famed novelist and uh, Daily Wire show host. I I did almost break on the I am a millennial, and so because I have. Haven't read a book or seen a movie. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, remember on election night you played Pocahontas? <laughs> I asked you, and I asked you, I think I asked you if your hand ever itched for the tomahawk. <laughs> like, I came on as, uh, as Elizabeth Warren, <laughs> and Warren. Drew, with a perfectly straight face, asks me, uh, Senator Warren, do you, when you look at uh, uh, Mr. Trump, do you ever feel your fingers itching for the tomahawk? <laughs> I thought that was the pinnacle of my deadpan, you know? <laughs> Andy you Millennial. Were, you were in that big blonde wig. And Andy Millennial, yo. <laughs> yo. Yo. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on. A pleasure. We have I to was talk wondering about what you were doing in here. Guys, uh, you know, when, when the guy this young locks himself in a room. You gotta wonder. That's true. All <laughs> well, the sounds coming out of here. You think, ah, I'm not going anywhere near that door. No, thank you, sir. So we're, we have to talk about one of our favorite subjects. Yes. Feminism. Feminism. We have to yeah. talk about this yeah. wonderfully feminist response to Melania. Yeah. And you know, one of our favorite websites, and I will take credit for you for introducing this you to you, is everydayfeminism.com. Yep. yep. A, a true work of art. I'm not convinced it's not satire. <laughs> Why has feminism become such a farce? Well, I, th I think just about everything. I mean, first of all, this thing with the stiletto heels was uh, unbelievable. There's Trump hatred. You know, what's wonderful is all these people in Texas are obviously rising to this level of nobility and grandeur and heroism. And they're the, all the people that the media hates, you know? <laughs> yeah. so it's they're like, deplorable. They're, they're just making themselves look so bad. You know, I think the left does the same thing over and over again. They decide that there's an injustice. And then they adopt the values of the oppressor, the person they think of as the oppressor. So they think that men have oppressed women, which, by the way, in the West, completely untrue. Right. I mean, that, that's the first thing. I mean, the, the thing is, in a society that's just starting out and as weak, women have a very special role to play, which is the role of burying children. And you have to protect them and you have to keep them away from the wars and things like that. We're so safe now that a lot of that stuff has gone by the boards, but that's only because in the modern world we're so safe. So they decide there's this injustice, and then they say, well, we want to be mm -hmm. what the oppressor is. So if men are making money, why can't women make money? If, if men work, why shouldn't women work? If, if, if men are strong, why shouldn't women, you know, it's if men are dying younger, why shouldn't women exactly. die? And which now they do. <laughs> right. you know, and it's so dumb because essentially men and women are the only kinds of people who are different. Mm. I don't really believe that black people and white people are different per se. You know, I mean, culture has a lot of effects, but, you know, but men and women are actually different. They actually have different strengths, different qualities, different things that make them men, that make them women. And sure, there's always a bell curve. You know, there's always different people who fall in. Not, not all men are as macho as you and I, as, obviously. As the two of us, I know. Some I mean, are a little on. more effeminate, <laughs> of course. You know, it's like you can't expect that kind of level. <laughs> We're at the very top of the macho belt. But, but, you know, I think this whole idea that we should value women, and, and conservatives fall for it, too. Mm -hmm. They'll say, you know, you want to see feminism, how about a woman with a gun? And I think you want to see feminism, how about a woman with a baby? <laughs> <laughs> how would that be? <laughs> how about a woman it's who's probably crying? scarier, too. Yeah, probably really, more intimidating. But, yeah, exactly. And, you, know, how, you know, how about a woman who's nurturing? How about a woman who's tender? How about a woman who doesn't care as much about money because she's doing something more important? You know, they even have these right. things where they'll say, if you paid 
a housewife for everything she did. It would cost millions. Actually, if you paid a housewife for the actual physical labor she did, it wouldn't cost very much at all. Right. What she's devoting to it, creating a home and creating a moral universe and creating a family, that's invaluable. You and, can't, and you can't making the man sane, and you make, know. And I, making a man a man. You know, yeah, that's right. You know, sweet little Lisa's been gone now for a couple of weeks visiting her family. I know. My I life know. is in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> my, my apartment is just Not destroyed. true, Michael. We had a great time shooting. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's all I do is I go shooting and drinking. That's pretty much all I've been up to. My wife leaves town about two days later. I'm out in the woods hunting deer <laughs> with my teeth. You know, I'm just running down deer. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that is. And, and they say, well, why should... Why should a woman only have value in what she does for a man? And you think, well, we all have value in what we do for one another. That's right. ridiculous. You know, so it's just, it's just a, an absolutely materialist greed mm. that has adopted the values of the people, the supposed values of the people they hate. And you, you know, you see it with uh, like Antifa, right? Antifa, they uh, say that the fascists are the oppressors, yeah. and so they become fascists. <laughs> they wear you, masks and beat up people. That's right. Yeah, that's right. They, they literally wear black shirts, you know. It's, yeah. Do you think this has always been inherent in feminism it with you know this indiscernibility of the sexes the sexes women should just be men the sexes should be the same they can't complement one another has that always been in first wave second wave feminism or is it is it blossoming now is it something I, new i think it's a question of revolution eating its own children i i have a theory that a lot of these changes come at the time that they're supposed to come you know that that when women, when this, the, a, uh, a civilization gets established, women start asking for more rights because they're, le they're in a way, they're less valuable as women. Right. Children become less valuable, so women become less valuable as the bearers of children. And so they want more things to do to give them value. I think that feminists attach themselves to those changes. I, I was there, you know, as, as a millennial, I was there <laughs> when some of this stuff was getting started. And it was pretty easy. You know, women said, we want to get in, we want to work, we want to do these things. And everybody thought, that's fair. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's pretty fair. But the feminists, the radical feminists, attach themselves to that. Right. And then essentially accuse you if you oppose feminism. And I am an anti-feminist. I'm, I'm not like a, you know, a sort of pro-feminist. I'm an anti-feminist. But they accuse you of thinking that women shouldn't have choices and rights. I believe a woman should choose whatever she wants to do. Each one is an individual. I believe in, I'm an individualist. Whenever the circle of feminism and the circle of individualism intersect, I'm a feminist. Yeah, you know, that, I, I think that the one circle's <laughs> down Sepulveda. <laughs> I don't know how lucky you're going to find that. But as we see with Melania Trump, they're not really offering freedom. What they're really offering is another way of oppression. Mm -hmm. What they want to do is turn the oppression on us. They want to say, well, women were oppressed. Now men will be oppressed. Right. You know, that's, not, that's no way to build a society. I think the changes that came for women, the giving them more you know, choices and things like that, are great. But I really think this wave of feminism has accomplished nothing but bad mm -hmm. and has attached itself to those good changes and sort of said, we did that when they just didn't. Yeah, it seems this third wave seems destructive in a in both a practical sense, but also in a theoretical sense. Yeah. It seems yeah. it's post-structuralist. It, it, uh, a lot of these theorists, they use lowercase letters to, to write their names. It is, it, it's attached to an intellectual movement that deconstructs culture. And, you know, I think it was uh, Chesterton wrote that feminists posit, something to the effect of feminists posit that when a woman serves her boss, that's freedom. And when a woman helps her husband, that's slavery. I always say that. I didn't know Chesterton Did, said that. I, uh -huh. I, they, they basically say to you, don't serve a man who loves you and mm -hmm. will dedicate his life to you and will help you raise your children and help you support. Dedicate it to a guy who would back over you and not even notice <laughs> you were dead. You know, I mean, that's, it, it makes absolutely no sense. And it really, you know, it, it, it hits at something very important because the entire human perception of the world is divided into yin and yang for the simple reason that there are men and women. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, they always want to say, well, men and women are exactly the same, but a transgender guy is a man with a woman inside. And you say, well, wait, how does he know? He's, how does they he know? exactly it's, the same. How does he know he's a man with a woman he's inside? Just a he's a double man. He's just, <laughs> no, just he like, contains what's, multitudes. What's, what's the diff, you know? Right. So they're, they're really taking something very essential to the human perception of the world mm. and damaging it and making people afraid to acknowledge it and trying to bully people out of acknowledging it. I think it has made, speaking as a millennial, I think it has made <laughs> millennial dating a nightmare. I think it's made millennial marriage a nightmare. I think people don't know it. And you know what else it's done? It's ruined the movies. Mm. Like you can't go to a movie and see the girl get rescued anymore because she's supposed to be so strong. And it's boring not to see the girl get rescued 
most women have that fantasy. <laughs> and every man wants to rescue and a woman. That's all wants, we want to do. That's all, all we, we dream about. For. That is all we live for. Yeah. That is true. I, as speaking as a millennial as well, <laughs> I, uh, I, you have noticed that that you, you know, I mean, I haven't dated in about a hundred thousand years at this point, yeah. but you don't. You don't ask women on dates. It's all this kind of hanging out. It's the way that you would talk to a buddy. Sex is easier, which is cool. I mean, that's great well, that's for the guys. Yeah. Off by any, yeah, yeah absolutely. But it, it is destructive. And, you know, your novels yeah. don't present a feminist vision of the world. <laughs> that well, might be the understatement. Only because I don't believe it's true. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I will pre present women who are tough or manly or masculine or stuff like that. But I will not write women the way feminists write women because I've never met a woman who resembled anything like those women. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I've met women who are very tough. I've met women who are very manly, you know, masculine. Uh, but they're still not. They're still women at mm -hmm. some level. And I, I just really don't write feminism because... Uh, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist as an actual real thing. It just world. doesn't ring true. It, it right. presents a vision of the world that none of us in our experience yeah. <laughs> believes to be true, e even the people who are propagating it, probably. That's right. Well, of course, that's why they, you know, that's why you get these things where they say, like, I was so upset that he said, you know, women aren't the same as men that I, I almost fainted. You know, and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I started to cry, here. you know, I mean, you go like, Gee. When he called me emotional, I almost <laughs> burst into tears. Yeah. No, no. And it's just, it doesn't make any sense. And, and, you know, college professors can afford to lie, but novelists are writing fiction. They have to tell the truth. You know? <laughs> right, so, that's right. Yeah. Speaking of your yeah. stories that don't present a feminist view of the world, I'll say. we've got one that we're working on around the clock in this broom closet in, of a studio. In this very room, we are creating the cure for the Clavenless Weekend, uh, another kingdom. You are on which, by the way, and this is the only nice thing I will ever say to you, ever, uh, you are doing an excellent job. You are the performer of this story that I wrote. And you, I'm watching you act it out and do the voices and all this stuff. And it's really, uh, actually, you almost have some talent. Did we get that on tape? Marshall, is that we sure we're erasing, recording? No, Marshall I will cut it out. And, <laughs> Andrew, you're really just gotta, ruining the ego. I need to like, put that on my IMDb or something. <laughs> Only the first positive. But, but no, no, thank you very much. I mean, even I'm listening to it and going, hey, this is pretty entertaining. <laughs> it, is, it is a great story. It's oh, really right. great. It does ring a little true to me because it's about this failed Hollywood guy who <laughs> wanders into a kingdom that is probably less surreal than... Sepulveda Boulevard that we walked off of, <laughs> or the studios, but it, it's going to be really fun, and we're releasing it. I actually don't know exactly when we're releasing I think it. It's, it's going to be shortly after Labor Day, and we're going to okay, bring it cool. out on Fridays to make up for the, because you don't have a show on Friday. I don't have a show on Friday so either, our, yeah. Our desperate fans will, uh, and hopefully they'll stave off some of these disasters that yeah, keep happening God help every us. time. I yeah, yeah, the, the, the world, uh, the world needs something to fill that yeah, gap. That's right. That's Absolutely. Right. So, yeah. So we'll try. We're going to release it hopefully a little after Labor Day. Yeah. It'll be a weekend release. We'll do like one episode a week, and people can write in and send all their angry comments. All they <laughs> that's what, what we live for. What are you guys for. doing? <laughs> Stick to feminists. Uh, excellent. Well. Andy, Andy Millennial, thank you for being here. Yo. It's a pleasure to have this great new cultural <laughs> correspondent. Andy Millennial, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank